Right, are we going to go on Facebook Live now? Right. Alfie, we're going to go on now, Alf. Okay, thanks. There you go. That's our code, isn't it? Alfie just said to me, will you give me 30 seconds notice before you go live? Yeah. And then I'll sort it out. out and then I forgot to tell her. <laughs> Mom the Biff. Whee! Come on in. Look at this. Come sit down. You boys. look so much better, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you look so much better. <laughs> you really do, Simon. That's a lovely haircut. Thank you so much. <laughs> when was the last time you had hair this short? Five years ago. I, I just grew my hair the last time I got it cut. I grew it for like five years and now I've cut it again. I'll probably grow it for the next four years. But you look better now. What does the wife prefer? She felt like she didn't know me. I was a stranger in my own house for a couple of weeks. What, when you had it cut? Yeah, yeah. Um, she says I look like a child. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think she's a big fan yet, but but she'll, she'll come round. She will she'll do, yeah. Uh, and morning, lads. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is you? very exciting. Isn't it? Isn't it? We've never met before. Well, we just mm. met outside. Mm -hmm. This is very nice to see. Well, you've you've invited us in this time. Last oh, time, last, last time we just sat and watched. <laughs> oh, well, no, last is, because, because I was a little bit scared oh. of Biffy Clyro, the three pronged attack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's just you know, loud music and stuff. The, those people who make that kind of noises, they they scare me a bit <laughs> until I meet them and I realise you just. Oh. Well, you're probably right. You probably are right. But um, anyway, so James and uh, Ben and Simon are here uh, from Biffy Clyro and uh, lots to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. But back to you and your hair, <laughs> <laughs> because not everybody in your band has a lot of hair. Um. um. Hey. <laughs> That's true, yeah, yeah. It's not that bad. At your peril here, Chris, at your peril. No, but what I'm saying is, when you've got somebody in your band who's follically challenged... Thank you. You you were taking the pee a little bit <laughs> by having such long hair. Like, that, that was long. That wasn't like shoulder length. That was down... Yeah, it was surplus. You may even too much. It. Yeah. Too much yeah. hair. Well, I'll take that on board. And I'm sorry, Ben, for offending <laughs> you with my mane. He never once offered before he cut it. I, know. I, could, I could have harvested that. I still got it. Because I'm, send, I'm going to send it to, you know, probably the, locks of love. But yeah. maybe you could have some. What, what did I you do? You just a fringe. Yeah. Just a <laughs> black fringe. Just one big, massive. Fringe. What did you do with it? I do I do have it. I'm sending it to like a charity because they, they'll give it to use it for wigs and things. for. Will they? Yeah. Cause you, okay, right. I looked what? after it. I looked after about this because I haven't got you for too long. But I do. I, I, you're for me. You're very similar to Dave Grohl, but in an opposite way. So Dave Grohl obviously has his hair and his and his facial hair, mm -hmm. and we've all seen footage of him without the facial hair and shorter hair, and he look. He just looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> weird, really <he's> weird. <laughs> he's not attractive. He is not sexy. He's a bit nerdy, and and dare I say, it, a little bit ugly, right? <laughs> But he certainly looks better with with the long hair and the facial hair. But yourself, I think you're better, a bit tidier. I actually think you're the opposite. I think with a short and neat, you look better. Thanks very much. My esteem is going through the roof <laughs> this morning. Thank you. What a wonderful start. Like for the, like this picture here, I've got to be there. Yeah, <laughs> who's bit, that? Bit man? ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be honest. <laughs> and look at that picture alone. Look who's staring at you. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah loving it's, uh, it's true. I never no. clocked that all this time. Yeah. Staring longingly no. at the main. No, no, no. I don't I think we were all in the same place for that photo, let's be honest. <laughs> but you were in a different place. Mentally, I Different photo studio. <laughs> so, uh, listen, loads to talk about. Uh, so, currently, uh, it's about the MTV Unplugged album. Mm hmm. Live at the Roundhouse in London, yeah. which is nice. I didn't even know MTV was still doing the Unplugged albums. We are. They weren't. We've, we've kind of resurrected it for us. I think we've been kind of the guinea pigs for the the new the new kind of release of it. So, I mean, a huge honour for us to be the first band to do it in the yeah. UK for such a long time. Well, because they they're, they're, they're such iconic albums. Yeah. You know, and so and, and a varied list of, of artists did the unplugs and it was brilliant. But I remember but it's long ago than it's longer than you think. Like I think 
I think the it was the early nineties. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I think it was like ninety two, ninety one, yeah. ninety two when it was like Nirvana, Nirvana and Pledge and... was like the, the big one, wasn't it? Yeah, that was yeah. just huge. Yeah. Was oh, yeah, come on, you can't ignore the Rod Stewart one. Though. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, <laughs> the Rod the Rod Stewart on <laughs> legs. Oh, oh. I remember. Whenever <laughs> I hear Rod Stewart's name, I just always want to mention that song that Rod Stewart, Sting, and Brian Adams yeah. did together for the Three Musketeers <laughs> soundtrack, right. and it was just it was. Emphysema. Was that, was, was that <laughs> all for oh, one? Hey. Yeah, yeah, it was all for one. Yeah. All for one. Yeah. One for all. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you oh, should cover it. that. Let's play it. Yeah, yeah, we let's should. Play it. Let's play it. Cover it. it. Why have we not We've covered missed it? Trick. Yeah. We have. That should have been on our unplugged. No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lovely bit in the album, uh, on, on the Rod Stewart album, where uh, Ronnie Wood joins him on stage. Or right. Ron Wood, as he refers to him. And obviously, Rod Stewart was, uh, for years, the patron saint of Scotland around the world. Yeah. And wasn't allowed to leave the house unless he was covered in tartan. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lovely bit where he introduces Ron, uh, Ronnie Wood. It's off the back of handbags at Gladrex, because I know the arm that well. You, do you, oh, you're yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes... Airbags and glad rags. <laughs> right, this strong Scottish accent. And then he just goes, and here's Ron Wood. <laughs> <laughs> and if you ever listen to that album, you'll never be able to get that album. <laughs> and here's Ron Wood. <laughs> <laughs> What a strange one. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so was that like, would you would you be nervous before doing something like that? Or were you just like, oh, this is just great, great crack. Let's Extremely just. Extremely nervous. Really? Yeah, because we're missing all the, the volume and all the pomp that we get with a, with a proper big live show. So it's very stripped back and you're bearing your soul. So it's terrifying. And what do you, how unplugged is it? Very. Yeah. I mean, completely, yeah. yeah. So, so some bands do it, they have a full kit and they still rock out and the only difference is they've got acoustic guitars instead of electric ones, but no, we went down the proper strip. James band. does play an electric bass. All so. oh, right, I sorry. Play an electric mm. bass. No disclosure, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> could, you, could you see me on the night? <laughs> yeah. Were you there? I thought, yeah. I thought, <laughs> well, well, like, well, were you there? Because like, what are you going to do on an unplugged? Do you when Smaller drums right. and, and with things like brushes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But when the idea first gets mentioned, do you sit there going, well, I'd be needed? <laughs> yeah, night off. <laughs> like and can a, I book a, a Are the drums on this? Yeah. <laughs> How unplugged is unplugged? Yeah. I'm hearing a pre recorded shaker in this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just don't see drums working this one, guys. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, it's good fun to, to adapt it and, and, try and try and change your parts. Yeah. Yeah, I think, cause, as you say, because most of the records, the big unplugged records were in the 90s, and we were kids of the 90s, so it was like a real big impact on us growing up. Mm. You know, I only listened to kind of noisy music until Nirvana did their unplugged, and it was. It was a real eye opener for me. So, to be asked was it was a real kind of flashback to being a teenager and what it meant to us, and and that's why we wanted to make a record out of it because not everyone that does that, I guess, makes an album. But for us, it was very important to do that. Oh, you've got to do it. But you've got to. You've know? got to. Are there, when together as a band, when you're deciding on stuff, mm -hmm. like for me, I would I would be like. Oh, MTV Unplugged. I've, I've got those MTV Unplugged albums. If yeah. we got, if we're gonna do it, we've got to put it out on album, just so we've got an MTV Unplugged. Exactly. Do you ever do stuff? Ever make decisions just on? Oh yeah, we just got her. We <laughs> oh, just got her. I mean, that, that's, uh -huh. that, that was kind of what happened this time. It, Great. it felt like you know, record company were open to it, but we certainly had, kind of pushed for it. We were like, we we can't do this and not document it and not have it right. on our shelves for the rest of our lives or whatever. So Andrew. it's the so it's the album uh, on May twenty fifth. Yeah, it's your first acoustic album, probably yes. your last. <laughs> so, depends how it goes. Depends well, how yeah. much we enjoy sitting down. That's basically what it comes to. <laughs> and uh, the global premiere of this, you can see this is uh, Friday, May twenty fifth, nine o'clock on MTV and ten o'clock on MTV Music. Because obviously, oh, yeah, which then would stand for music, music television, television music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. I've <laughs> <laughs> not thought that through, have they? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Times now, have changed. <laughs> also, uh, you are working on, as far as I'm aware from my research and spies, you are currently working on two albums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not a double album. No. no. Two no, no, no. separate albums. Yes. Yeah. We are. At the moment, we're we're working on. Why are you laughing? 
just because for a second there it was trying like trying to get blood out of a stone. You're asking, and you're just going, <laughs> yep. we're just going, yes. yes. Well, I know the answer. I already know what the answer is. They need us to fill in the gaps. I know it's like we, we know the answer, but we don't want to tell you. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could have just said it, and you could have stayed in bed. <laughs> 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 We are doing a record for a movie. We're filming a movie in July with a wonderful director called Jamie Adams. Is this dramatic? This it's a theatrical movie. It's not a musical or anything. And we are recording the album of music for it just now. So we're making the music before they film the movie, so that they can listen to the music while they're filming scenes and things. And it just let the music inspire the movie rather than the other way around. So it was a really intriguing prospect for us and. Something that I'm not really aware has happened before. I think maybe Quadrophenia actually, believe it or not, I think the record for Quadrophenia was made before the movie. Oh, really? Um, and released before the movie. So that is our only touchstone. So, yeah. I who, really sweet, you who know. sold this idea to Biffy Clyro? Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me ask Let me ask Ben and Jack. Do I, do I call you James or do I call you Jim? You can call me Jim. Oh, oh, there you go. Thanks, Jim. That's nice. Welcome. welcome. Jim it takes a lot. It takes people a long time to get <laughs> to call him Jim. Christian. Well, that's why I thought I'd ask. You've fluttered those fast. eyelashes. As <laughs> You're on Jim Tab. Jim. Yeah, Jim, Jim Tab. Tab. It's, it's Jim and B. Yeah. Uh, so, so Simon comes to you and he goes, "Hey, this guy's come to us with an idea, right? So nice. it's brilliant. We're gonna make." Uh, an album, a soundtrack album for the movie. Yeah. You know, the movie's not made. We make the music first and then they make the movie. He's moved to Cardiff, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's not bad. That's that good. It's all right. Bad. It's all right. It's decent. Yeah. Yeah. Pipe down you or I'll make you do your Ronnie Corbett impression. Oh, no, okay, yeah. Yeah, you win. So Simon's sending you this idea. Be honest, you must have been thinking, this sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> to make a soundtrack for a film before they've made the film, then they make the film to the soundtrack is mental. It, it is quite bonkers. It's definitely backwards, but it means that we get to make the music and then let them go make the movie. There's not a case. Sometimes if you make the music afterwards, they're always asking you to change things and adapt it and edit it. And I think this way it's like, there's the music, go make the movie. And it, it kind of allows us a bit more freedom, I think. We can be like, adapt it. Adapt, adapt it. the visual, please. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, you're so on. arty. Yeah. You are so arty. That scene. <laughs> and, and, and so with, and this is quite a serious question. When, so when it comes to something like this, obviously you've never done anything like this before. Yeah. It's not kind of really been done that much. But when you create stuff, especially at this point in your career, how important is uh, success and uh, future success of whatever you're doing uh, uh, against just the creativeness of what you do? So you go into a studio and you can create. You, you work together very well. You know how you all work in a studio. And you could go and create an amazing piece of music mm -hmm. but you could also equally sit there look at each other in the eye and go that is brilliant we are never releasing it because <laughs> it's just not right yeah Does that makes i guess like, yeah i think that yeah your whole your whole life making music's a bit of a balance you know because mm. as you say i wouldn't want our next biffy album on warners to be you know, just an instrumental album or spoken word. That's not what we are. That's right. not what we do. So doing something like this definitely liberates us a little. And and obviously the expectation, the nature of the project is different. So there's not kind of the same expectation, you know, amongst ourselves and amongst fans of the band or anything. So that's what makes it liberating. You know, we take every time as a Biff, a proper Biffy studio album. Mm. We can there's kind of a ballpark. We want we want them to be amazing songs on it. And this kind of record, it's not so much about the songs it's about the ideas behind the music and the, right. and the instrumentation and things and and kind of capturing a mood whereas normally i think we i mean i, I like writing songs that's kind of what appeals to me that's what i learned to do when i was 15 so mm. uh so yeah but there's definitely it's li liberating into yeah yeah but freedom for example the other day there's a part of one of the songs where we just speed the song up mm -hmm. over the course of two minutes just to twice the speed of the song and it makes zero sense it almost makes you feel a bit seasick when you hear it which we would never do in a re regular record but for the sake of the movie it kind of works like that it's meant right. to feel you make you feel dis disorientated so. what it, it, you speed up as you're recording it, you just get faster or you've actually taken the finished products and just no we, play, we played along with it it took us a while it was hard yes 
And then right as it gets to double the speed, it drops straight back to half the speed again. I like that. Yeah. And I, yeah, so I guess you couldn't, well, you could do that on one of your albums, I guess, but it yeah. would be a little bit, it would be a bit. be met with some confused faces, I think. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the longer you go in, the, t- the tougher it is as well for the balance. Because when you, when you start out, you're grabbing from everywhere and, you want, and you're kind of finding your sound, yeah. and I think. And the irony is any person that makes music or band or anything, you once you find your sound, you're trying to kind of shirk it off, and really, that's mm. all you've ever wanted is to have a sound that people go, "Oh, that's Biffy Clyro." And I then- think it's really, I do think it's really, really tough for for, for bands uh, who have achieved a certain amount of success when they move forward. If you look at, so take the Gallagher brothers. So Liam releases an album which sounds like Liam. Mm-hmm. And sounds like if you're an Oasis fan, you're going to hear that Liam album, in my opinion, and you're going to love it. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's yeah. Liam doing what he does. And then Noel brings out his album, and Noel's gone, eh, I'm going to do something a little bit different now. Mm-hmm. And the the jury is out. Do you, do you, you know, do you give them what they want? And it's like a tap. This is what I do. And you put it out. It's a market store. We sell fish. That's a, that's what we do. Yeah. Or do you go, no, we're going to, I'm going to be creative. And I guess there is a risk. Uh, to a certain extent, on how it's going to be perceived, like the Arctic Monkeys' new album, mm-hmm. yeah. a lot of people uh, talk about the album like this. Oh, it's no, it's like it's you know, it's it's good, <laughs> and you're there going, you don't like it, but you want to like, like it, you don't want to yeah. not like it. Yeah, and it's interesting talking to people about it. Yeah, I think I mean you've got to scratch scratch the itch. Yeah. You know, I guess maybe I mean the main difference between Noel and Liam is that Noel's always been creative and always sure. kind of had the next idea coming and and. You know, no, it's the same with the Arctic Monkeys. It's like they've got to scratch that itch. They'd be doing themselves a disservice if they made a record bec- that they thought the fans would like. And and it's funny, you see how angry people get. They're like, where are the guitars? You know, like, what's this weird piano music? It's like, it's like you either like the band, you don't, you trust them, you know, like you followed them this long, you know, like have a bit of faith. Yeah, but in you people. say that, but I would be very disappointed if the next Biffy Clyro album didn't have an, an out of character, slow ballad. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm now used to it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I want. I like want a do 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 track. And that's what I want. You won't like our new ska vibes then. In the next <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I know. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. But I think, I think though, also if you're if you're into the Arctic's, you know, you know, you're really drawn to Alex Turner's lyrics and things. And I think he's excelled himself in that manner. And it's just, and same with Noel. Noel's always had a psychedelic side to what he's doing, mm. and maybe that's come to the fore a little. But yeah, I mean, you do, you do have a fair point, but it, it, it's it's really it. Um, it depends how safe you want to play it. Some people spend their entire career making the same record because they don't want to risk anyone disliking yeah. their band, and that is the opposite of being creative and being inspired, you know. And uh, and I guess if you're, it depends what world you're in as well, you know. If you're in the mainstream kind of world, yeah, then, and you'll it, never get it right. You'll never no. get it right. Yeah, There's always be someone say, this, no. yeah, this hasn't evolved enough, or this has evolved too much, and mm-hmm. we got it quite a bit in the last record, yeah. you know. People go, why aren't you making songs like your first album? It's because like, we made those songs on our first album. That's you know? right, yeah. <laughs> what can you tell us about the new album? That you... mm. Is it done? No. 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 We, we go straight to Wales. The boys are done. All the drums and bass are done. Yeah. So we're off to Wales in a couple of weeks to finish it off. And we can tell you it's called, the movie's called Balance Not Symmetry. Mm-hmm. The what? Balance, not symmetry. That's the album. And the movie, well, the movie. Oh, title, so, yeah, so, so that's the movie album. So yeah, yeah, there you go. Balance, not symmetry. Yeah, yeah the, the other I album. Know are... What that means? <laughs> <laughs> I like. It's quite an intriguing title. I like I don't that. Know yeah, what that tell, means. Uh, that's all right. You I don't need to know. You don't need to know. It's balance, not not <laughs> symmetry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> balance, not symmetry. Balance. Why it's not the, symmetry, not balance? Because it's balance, not symmetry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and when <laughs> when will that see the light of day? When the movie's done, I guess. Yeah, well, because we're working on another record as well, which yeah. we're hoping to... This album will hopefully be out kind of September, October. What, Maybe, Balance? Balance. Right. And, and then, while that's out, we'll be working on the ne- recording the next record, which will hopefully be out the early part of 2019. So so, so the next Biffy Clyro album, the, the, fo- album, the, album. the Ellipsis follow-up, mm-hmm. uh, how many uh, you got tracks done already? We've got about ten or twelve for that all together. And uh, have you got a do 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 track? Because <laughs> my <laughs> girlfriend will be delighted if you. Have. We're going ba 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 ba. She might not be happy with that. Be myself. <laughs> yeah. She might. She might be a bit. Oh, this is a bit, I've got a bit Arctic monkey. <laughs> 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 I like it. Uh, and uh, and then 
the September uh, is the is a tour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we are doing a seated tour. We are playing acoustically on the road. We've never done it. It's a bit intimidating, but it'll be it'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to sweat and kill ourselves every night? What an, what an easy gig for Ben. We're calling it the um, Get Fat Tour because yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 not really expending much en- en- energy. So the, all the, all the, an entire acoustic show, uh, show. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, playing Dublin, Belfast, Cardiff, Birmingham, Edinburgh, Manchester Opera House, beautiful, and then the Royal Albert Hall in London. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Nice. Nice. We would tell you to get your tickets, but it's sold out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. oh no. did, you, did you hear that drop? <laughs> Hang on a sec. Where's the clang? <laughs> Do we have a clang? Where's the clang? There you go. Oh, there uh, okay, uh, ben, so. Ben's actually taking that clang with him on tour to use during Rear Rage. <laughs> you do, you need it. Uh, let me just run, make sure I've got everything. Well, I, I could talk to you for hours, but the MTV Unplugged Live at Roundhouse London uh, comes out May 25th, which is Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see the show on MTV on Friday night and MTV Music. Yeah, <laughs> M- yeah music, television, music, That's right. television. Yes. Uh, and then hopefully you have tickets to go and see them in September, which is going to be great. And then the Balance Not Symmetry album. <laughs> you're, you're unsure. You're unsure. We're going to pass you before we officially see Seriously. <laughs> M- Muse are at home listening going, damn, that's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> Balance Not Symmetry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing an album for a movie. The movie's not made. They do the album. Oh, <laughs> we should have thought of that. And then... Uh, Music will just use their time machine and they can go back and do it. They will. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then... Uh, so that comes out in September and then uh, the next album will be next year. But you did, there's no yeah. rush on that. Well, I know it seems like it seems like an awful lot. We've got a lot of music out. for folk to get their teeth into. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, Ellipsis is still, still, you know, still banging it out. That's still a great album, thank but um, really nice to see you. Th- and you. and really, thank you for coming in. I, and I, I genuinely mean this. Th- you're, it's not in your DNA to get up before Ooh, midday, no. <laughs> unless <laughs> there's money involved. <laughs> and I understand sort that. that. Yeah. <laughs> when do we get paid, Chris? Uh, <laughs> speak to the record company. Yeah. <laughs> speak to that nice, calm person from the record company yeah. who's with me. No, it's a <laughs> pleasure to come. <laughs> <in. laughs> <laughs> he he, he kind of wakes us up in the morning. For yeah, he does. Yeah, he's wow. a yeah. What a wake up call Hello. that is. He's by name, he's like, by nature, though, isn't it? For young man. Young man. What, mate? <laughs> 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 oh, Morning, Phil. Hey, calm down. Hey, don't, don't let him come to the acoustic tour. He'll be too hyper. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I'm really intrigued. I haven't, obviously, I've not seen that DMTV and plug thing, but I'm really intrigued to see it. I hope I, you enjoy I, it. I really. And is it literally, is it a lot of. A lot of the, is it like a greatest hitsy thing? With yeah, some music? we it's we the unplugged stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, we played about eighteen or nineteen songs in the night, and a couple of them didn't sound great when we listened back. So we, the albums is fifteen songs, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> well, you got to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was great. We kind of based the stage set a little bit on the Nirvana one from back in the day, just as a reference to our inspiration. Mm-hmm. Nice. And uh, yeah, it was it was fab. So hopefully, it comes across how special the night was in the. Well, everybody get it. Friday, it comes out. Jim, stop talking. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but nice to see you. And come back. We will. Anytime. Mm-hmm. Just do a gig so with the radio. Oh, fact, before you go, that's oh, what yes. I've got to ask. Um, can Next time you're doing a sound check somewhere, mm-hmm. can Dominic and I come and play with you? Yeah. yeah. Is that right? What respect? Well... In the respect, in instruments wise, okay. yes. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not cards, keep keep not keep back rides. Yeah. Can you hit play on the on the on the video that's we that on the? Oh, uh, if James is listening, he'll be able to. Oh, okay, so we uh, th- this is our new thing. We want to play with with other bands Fabulous. because Dominic and I are basically frustrated rock stars. Ah, yeah. well, you Always guys have play? been. What's your what's your tool? You know, um, like like Jim's a frustrated stand up comic. <laughs> 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 I, I play a bit of guitar, yeah. and, uh, and and Chris has been known to hit the drums as Is well. Is that right? Ah, yeah. yeah. You've got now, that glint in your eyes, now, Will. I, I, it's it's important, I tell you, I can't play drums, but with everyone else playing, I can blag drums. You can blag it? I can yeah. blag wow. it. Like, if you were watching me, be like, he cannot play drums. But to the untrained eye, you know, I've got the moves. Yeah, I've got the moves. It's like quite impressive, actually. So yeah. when do you play, where do you play together? 
Um, we don't. What, it's, we, <laughs> just one so far, oh. uh, and that was with Stereophonics. Oh. Really nice. Dublin in so Soundcheck. Look, if you look and I, on the screen. Oh, here we go. Oh. So that's, that's, that's Kelly, Kelly there. there. Yep. And that's Dominic on guitar. No. Oh, oh. No. You've got to what wait. What a voice, Dom. Me. What a voice. Thank you so much. <laughs> there we go. We're on a high riser coming up, whatever oh. it's called. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, we can't guarantee you'll get your own riser. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting thing was, and we're nothing but gracious, Dominic and I. Yeah. I'm like, can we play with with you guys? This is in Dublin. Uh, and they went, yeah, yeah, you can come to Soundcheck and play with us. Great. So I got there and I thought, well, the drummer will be there just set at the side of the stage watching. No, no, no. He played <laughs> and I played as well. All right, okay. <laughs> and I'm, I don't think they properly trusted us. No, no. yeah. <laughs> so this is our, Dominic and I, this is our thing. We want to try and play with as many bands as we can. What yeah. a great idea. Of course, you're welcome anytime. Yeah. Welcome Love anytime. that. Thank Thank you. You. Yeah, we need a copy of that image. So Simon are you just play, saying that. Are you playing Brazil or anywhere <laughs> yeah. fabulous, we're playing, Barbados? Because we will Finland. travel. <laughs> yeah. Finland. Oh, we're playing we, in Moscow if you want to come there. You can't make yeah. those dates. <laughs> playing in Benidorm. <laughs> If you're interested, I mean, <laughs> in the drum. Yeah, Hello. Come on, that sounds alright. <laughs> Pepper, you're not interested in in musical. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll oh well, be, Pepper plays the flute. Yeah. Ah, well, there you go. Oh, that'd that'd be an unholy in. trio. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, guitar, bass, and flute. Uh, guitar, drums, and flute. <laughs> What are we waiting for? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that bombshell. Uh, have a great day. Thank you for coming in again. Anytime you. you want to come back, uh, come and see us in September when the when the the album for this movie, which is never going to get made. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, guys. Cheers. And Cheers. Friday, get the MTV Unplugged album from Biffy Clyro. Thank you very much, Biffy yeah. Clyro, everybody. Mom the Biff. The Chris Miles Show. Yo! Yeah.